um, you know, I've been rejected before, you know, everybody has, and uh, <laughs> you know when you've been rejected because, you know, you feel it, you know, and you know that's the end, and that there's no other, you know, possibilities. I, I don't like to put myself in that position to where I'm going to get let down. Amen. Yeah, it's kind of weird because, like, I never really give out my number. They always give me their number, and then I call up, and it's like Taco Bell or, you know, Glenn's Laundry. That's only happened a couple times. But I don't understand. Well, I guess they're just cruel. I don't really care. They're just, I have the internet. <laughs> I think I had to go back to when I first entered college. Um, really, the first chick that I was dealing with when I, you know, um, started going to college, and she was bad. She was cute. You know what I'm saying? Um, she was a typical light-skinned chick, playing hard to get. You know, at the same time, you know, she was attracted to me. I was attracted to her, or whatever. Um, but eventually, it just got to the point when I was like, well, hey, you know, let's do something here. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I mean, she, she, she turned me down. You know what I'm saying? But, but it was kind of in one of those ways where she just kind of broke off communication. And then I hear about her, you know, kind of messing with some other guy later. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, you know, it, it, ooh. If she rejected me, if she really shut me off, then, you know, I, I, would, I would feel that. And, Obviously, I would try to kind of, you know, you know, stop, you know, pursuing her, I guess. Um, but no, I know what rejection, rejection is, and it's happened to me, it, just like it happens to everybody, and you know, um, it's not something I really, uh, really like or enjoy. It takes a lot to wear your heart on your shirt sleeve yeah. and go after what you want, and regardless of the outcome. Mm -hmm. Just be able to and get back on your horse and, and keep on riding. It scares the shit out of me. And I've never done it. And I did, well, I did it one time, and it ended with rejection. Which sucks. And Bad. leading up to that, being my biggest fear, it was realized. And I haven't even talked to a girl since then mm -hmm. in a long time. And it's bad. But do you think that you could become immune to it if you did it more? No. No, it's still going to hurt just as much as it... Because you take all these powerful things. feelings you have for someone and you pour them into one moment mm -hmm. of saying, I love you, or whatever. And they pour it into a trash compactor and fucking hand it back to you and it's like a little... And ball. they ball it up and throw it right back at you. I think what it does, it just really gives you perspective. You know what I'm saying? To really look at your situation and you say, well, all this stuff that meant so much or whatever, all this pent up whatever, you know what I'm saying? And and then being rejected, you getting turned down after the fact or whatever. I mean, it's like, I mean, that, that shit didn't kill me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm still here, you know? At the end of the day, I mean, you know, you, you can't you can't be afraid of rejection. It, it's going to come in some shape or form or whatever. I mean, but if you just, you know... Just, just keep at it. And not so much in terms of keep at her, just keep on her or whatever, but just keep at it, just keep moving. Because, I mean, honestly speaking, she's not the only girl you're attracted to. Honestly speaking, she's probably not the only girl you've hollered at. So just keep moving, you know what I mean? And you'll find that, like, you know, some of the effort you put in, you know, work you put in, like, three months ago or whatever, to come back to you. This is a, a phrase I use. It's called keep moving, shorty. And that's, that's what I use, and I think every guy should use it. If a girl rejects you, some girls reject you because they want attention. And you can see that a lot. They can brag to their girlfriends and say, "Oh, you know this guy. This this guy tried to come at me, and I rejected him. You know, I, I, they just want that attention." So for those, I tell them to keep it moving, shorty, because what that girl won't do or give me, and I don't have to talk. I'm not talking about sexually all the time. What that girl won't give me, another one will. So I say keep it moving. So that's my um, little model right there. Keep it moving, shorty. There was an, another girl that I was talking to and we were cool or whatever and I knew she liked me, I liked her and everything. And uh, I was like, so what's up, you know, what's going on and everything, we should hook up. And she was like, oh, no, I really like you a lot, but I have a boyfriend, which I knew, you know, you know but I, I was thinking about talking to you, but like, I don't know, you know, I just want to keep it, you know, just keep it friends and everything like that. You know, and I guess it comes to your question of, you know, what do you do when you get into the friend zone? You know, and you break the fuck out. That's what you do. You think you're in there, you're doing good, throwing some moves down and shit, and then you start talking to the girl. But see, 
the friend comes in, that's when the guy doesn't make the move. You all of a sudden become the friend because you weren't aggressive and didn't take that next step. But it also could be, even if you would have taken that next step and got denied, the girl still would have wanted to be friends either way with you. It's, it's, it all depends on your personality, but it is really a, a bummer, man. <laughs> you come up to her, she's with her friend. Oh, here's my friend Chris, and you know, he's like a little brother to me. <laughs> and you're sitting there and you're thinking, what in the world? I spent all this money, bought all these gifts to become a brother? What do you have to be really before, you know, your boyfriend and girlfriend? You gotta be friends, right? I'm not sure. You know, you gotta be, you gotta be friends before you really make. I, got, I guess, yeah, I guess to a certain extent, but. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily classify us, me as being in the friend zone. I would just uh, classify that, you know, me being in the um, sort of friend part of our, you know, relationship that's really growing more, more so toward the boyfriend girlfriend status. Really more toward the serious stage, you know. What? <laughs> the signs that you're slipping into a friend zone is when a woman starts to communicate to her other friends. Like, hey, this is my brother. You want to meet him? This is, this is my buddy or my homeboy. Or when she starts to communicate to you serious issues about other relationships. When she starts to tell you, you know, I'm dating this guy and I really care about him, she might take you and go do things with you that she might do with a girlfriend, like shop. Yeah, I've had friends who fell into the friend zone where I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to the mall, you wanna come with, you know, sort of thing. Because I know that if a guy approaches me in that mall and you're with me, I have no problem with talking to him while you're there. Once you fall into that friend zone, you're my buddy. You know, hey, this is my friend so and so. How are you? You see yourself as, as more than just a, you know, a candidate for a date or whatever. You see yourself, especially if you already know the person or whatever. You know, you get comfortable with them, and then it, like you know, like you say, it's, it's the term of it is perfect. You fall into it. You fall right into it. And you don't even know what happens, and you all all of a sudden you're talking about you know, their boyfriends and all, they treat them like shit. You want to be there for them, but you want to be more than friends. And um, it's just so frustrating them to hear complain about their boyfriend, how they're assholes. And then you're right there, right in front of them, you know, like I'm right here. You know, what's wrong with me? I've got, I've got a guy friend that he's one of my really good friends, probably one of my best friends. And he's just too nice. We don't want too nice of people because they just don't need, get anywhere in life. Mix. Yeah, we need you some know, nod. He's not and nice. he's very very shy. Usually the guy friends are very shy around girls and they don't feel shy around us so they think that they can have us but really we just look at them as our best friend and our brothers kind of thing. If you feel like you're creeping in the friend's zone, do a couple things. Don't pick up the phone when they call. If you know they're calling about this and this and that. If you see that, and then again, if you see that they talking about some other guy, she ain't for you because her mind is on the other guy. Don't save her. Oh, Project Pass said, don't save her. It is not your job to be saving them, you know. All, all, all is your job to be is just be a good man, be yourself. You know, I mean, I, I, when people are stuck on other people, you know, it's it's really not our jobs to, to really try to get them out of that. It's their jobs to get themselves out of that. Guys that fall into that friend zone and you're, you're in that mosh pit of friends, sometimes you can pull one out. You know, you can fish, fish a line and you might be able to pull one back out of the friend zone and make it happen. But for the most part, if you're thrown into that, we are no holes bars, friends, I look at you like a brother, dude that's nasty you gonna stay in that pool <laughs> and there's no coming back